Greetings and welcome to uh, STL Soccer Talk, the video edition. Uh, here we are once again. I'm Tom Timmerman, as you might have guessed, and as you might have guessed, this is Beth O'Malley. Uh, Beth, we're, we're into the postseason now, but it's also award season. And it we've is. Had, and we've had, um, so far, St. Louis City's had a first, a second, and a third place uh, finisher in, uh, in awards. And we, they may have had a fourth role, we know, but we don't find out that's well, third. I was going to say, do the second and third place even really matter once the main award is... See, this is another question. Like, does well, the, there's no silver medal of what you're saying. Or, uh, that, yes, uh, that is that what Tim I'm Parker saying. doesn't get a runner-up Defender of the Year award. He does but, not. But he gets, but he, he gets the, the warm feeling that comes from knowing that uh, a lot of people thought he had a very good year defensively uh, this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and he has admitted it was one of maybe his best season mm -hmm. uh, ever, how he played out there. But And that's the most recent award. That is the most recent award. Tim Parker finishing second. Um, uh, in MLS, in the, I've now lost what I was going to say. The MLS Defender, the MLS Defender of the Year, of the year Award. Mm -hmm. um, losing out to Matt Miazga of Cincinnati, yep. um, which was kind of expected because uh, Miazga plays for Cincinnati, the best team uh, in the league, and that's a lot of times how these things go, is if you're the, the best player on the best team, uh, you win these uh, awards. You kind of assume that they are then the best player. player. Somebody, somebody was responsible for that happening, and you can only give credit to one. Uh, but the Defender of the Year is a lot of times almost needs to be given to the group at large, uh, which in City's case would be like about nine guys because they mm -hmm. had a bunch of people that played uh, defensively, especially on the back line. They have a lot of depth, you might say. <laughs> depth, they might say. Indeed. But we've digressed. But we also, they had a winner in that uh, Roman Berkey you know, receiving the Goalkeeper of the Year award, uh, which doesn't have a person's name on it, unlike the uh, other awards, but it's the Roman Berkey. Uh, is the best goalkeeper in the league, which I, and he won fairly handily. I was about to say he had a pretty big percentage of the vote when you consider that um, several groups vote on these awards and they don't vote twice. So the finalists for this award, they announce the top three vote getters and then mm. they announce who won. So mm. there's no re vote after they announce the top three vote getters. Right. And you know, Rowan Brookie had one stat that he was really good at, which it was, it was goals saved above expected. So if you took a team's expected goals, like how many goals they score, you know, allowed in this case, and um, he was like, he saved like, I don't remember, it was like nine or ten uh, that he uh, denied above expected, above what an average goalie would be expected to give up. And, you know, when you are preventing nine or ten goals, that usually translates into a couple wins. Uh, you could have to refine the stat and say, what well, were the saves, you know, the best kind saves of he made. Kind game, right. Uh, things like that. But uh, an excellent year for Roman Berkey's first in America, uh, Major League Soccer, really revitalizing his career after being on the bench, being the backup, and not playing at Borussia Dortmund mm -hmm. much. And that was a concern coming into this season for Berkey, that he had played so little over the previous seasons. And he, um, he really got back up to speed and did really well. <laughs> Pretty well, yeah. <laughs> did extremely well. Uh, and then he had uh, Ed uh, Lubin coming in, uh, coming in third uh, for uh, Newcomer of the Year yep. um, behind Lionel Messi. But that's a, a topic that we go into uh, maybe at too much length on the, uh, on the podcast. Yeah, we talk a lot, a lot about awards on the podcast. <laughs> um, and oddly enough, a lot about NHL awards yeah. on the podcast, which I promise you is interesting. So please tune in. <laughs> and if Beth found it interesting, then I got to assume you would too, because uh, it was me talking a lot. Just comparing my voting experiences between Major League Soccer awards yes. and NHL awards. But what are the other MLS awards still to come? Still to come. Uh, coming up next week, I believe on next Thursday, is the Ziggy Schmid MLS Coach of the Year Award. You always like it when I say Ziggy Schmid. I do. It's yeah, a great I'm, name. name yeah. Um, and apparently he was a great guy because Tom guy. used to yeah, know him. Yeah, and uh, he's, I've got his phone number on my phone. Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, I, can, I keep it there for sentimental reasons. Um, but yeah, and Bradley Carnell is expected to really be the favorite in that one. And, uh, you know, uh, Pat Noonan, the coach at Cincinnati, would be really the only other right. you know, viable candidate for that work. And certainly Pat Noonan, who is a St. Louis guy, did a great job in turning Cincinnati around uh, but it was a two-year process. He, I thought he should have won it last year, uh, but he didn't, and, but he's probably going to be second uh, this year. And then the MLS uh, MVP award, which I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the date uh, that that one is, is coming out. That's coming out uh, sometime in the future. And that one's named for Landon Donovan. Um, we're waiting, we have until the end of the month, for uh, St. Louis City to make its roster decisions, a lot of options 
on players to pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, so decisions have to be made there, and then uh, they will dip into the transfer market uh, come uh, January, and we'll see how that uh, goes and what uh, Lutz Van Steel wants to do. But he th really likes the summer transfer window more than the winter. Uh, transfer window. Yeah, that's when the European leagues are off and more contracts might be expiring or up and so he seems to find the diamonds in the rough in the European mm -hmm. market more mm -hmm. than the American market maybe. Yeah. Uh, but almost, City has contractual rights on almost everybody on the team this year. Everyone either is under contract for multiple years or they have an option uh, for next season. So um, I would expect that a lot of those guys will be back and you'll less, next year's team will look a lot like this year's team, uh, though there will be uh, a few changes uh, here and there. And we will find that out between now and uh, the beginning of January when uh, training camp opens and Sydney gets ready for its next season. Thanks for watching and listening, and please subscribe to the podcast and to the paper because that's how we get paid. <laughs> that's, that's great. You get paid? I do. Oh my God. Well, surprising developments there, things I learn every week. Anyway, yes, uh, and uh, subscribe and like and hit all sorts of buttons. Uh, until the next time we're here, I won't say next week because it's, next we're, week. we're going on a slightly altered schedule here in the off season. Yep. But uh, for, until the next time we're here, uh, for Beth, I'm Tom, for Ali behind the camera, for Gary getting his lunch out of the, the podcast room, uh, for all of us, until next time, be seeing you.